Hello fellow YouTubers, welcome to this video. Now, I'm assuming that some of you are not subscribed, and if you are not, feel free to subscribe. But for those of you who are subscribed, I apologize. That's all I need to say about that now. So, I wanted to make this video because recently a lot of YouTubers have been getting attacked, exposed, and as a YouTuber, I want to throw my two cents in there. But recently I watched a video, and it was some guy, and basically he rambled on and on for about five minutes, and then like attacked grade A under A, and it was like, you know, it, it was, uh, I'm not gonna say it was a bad video, because it wasn't. You know, he has a nice voice, the way he talks makes sense, but it's the same video that's been made over and over again, and it really doesn't give YouTubers very much credit. Okay, so I'm going to try to defend YouTubers a little bit. So people complain that a lot of their favorite YouTubers go to these videos where they're just strictly talking about drama. And to viewers, we get angry about that. And it's a fair argument. I'd be angry too if my favorite YouTuber did that. But then you get to the point of, well, shit, there is like a million, billion YouTubers out there. And if your favorite YouTuber does that, well, now you don't have to watch their videos anymore. You can find somebody else. Maybe they're a little too big for their britches and you can find somebody smaller who deserves some more attention. And that's an argument I hear a lot where people say, oh, well, smaller YouTubers put more effort into their videos. And while that's a fair argument to make, I don't think it necessarily proves anything. Because you very well might put a lot of effort in your videos as a small YouTuber, but you, effort doesn't equate to success. And with good reason, realistically. Because if anybody could put in the effort and get results, we'd have so many famous YouTubers, it wouldn't even be funny. YouTube is a platform where, where charisma is a big part and effort is a small part. And that's fine because it's just like everything else, realistically. But people typically say that, um, that big YouTubers attack other YouTubers and they don't like it. Well, Realistically, the reason they do it is for you. You. The finger wasn't in the camera shot. But when you attack another YouTuber, you know what happens at the very least? You have people coming in from that person's channel trying to defend their favorite YouTuber. So, say I were to put out a video attacking, I don't know, um, Game Theory. Okay? I'm like, game theory sucks. Game theory stupid. Matt Pat is dumb. Okay, which none of that is true. Game theory, one of my favorite channels. But if I put out a video like that, he has 7 million subscribers. Last I checked, I could be wrong. But he has all these subscribers who are willing to sit there and put up an argument against me for their favorite YouTuber. So you immediately increase like the scale of everything. I mean, if I do that, hell, maybe some of the people would agree with me and they'd subscribe. Let alone if they view and I put an ad in the video, I'm making that sweet money. But people don't think about it like that. They like thinking about it as like, um, you should do original content to please your fans. Well, the bottom line is, if the fans don't unsubscribe and continue watching your videos anyway, then nothing can be changed. Because by attacking other YouTubers, you increase your the bubble that people will find you in. I don't know. I'm sure there's a phrase for it, but I just can't put my finger on it right now. It's like right now, I have 62 subscribers. Okay, and probably like 15 of them are still active. Maybe. I, I'm... That's been really generous. Now, realistically, if you're watching this video, odds are you're not subscribed. So why are you here? Is it because I put some, some other YouTubers in the title to, to sweeten the pot a little bit? Probably. You clicked on this video and you said, I'm going to defend my favorite YouTuber. Or I want to see what his argument is against favorite YouTuber. And that's why YouTube drama exists. Because realistically, say I did have a million subscribers. I could just be like, ah, I don't feel like doing anything original right now. I, I want to keep my fans happy. I want to make some money real fast. I'll just insult grade A under A for a minute. 
Now I can pay my bills. Now, um, people like saying that big YouTubers don't take chances, and it's probably because half of them don't. There's no reason to. Because for one, whatever got you there, it's what got you there. If you're a baseball player who hits a bunch of home runs, that's what got you there. Do you really have to work on your defense? You should, but you're still going to have a team if you don't. They picked you for your home run hitting ability, so you don't necessarily have to work on your defense. The same thing goes for YouTubers. Say, say I was a famous YouTuber for, I don't know, cat videos. Okay, then that means that my fans are here for cat videos. And yes, if I do change my content and start talking about drama, there's a reason for that too. Because it gets you the views. YouTube, and I hate to say it like this, is a business for successful YouTubers. And by that I mean, if you are a successful YouTuber, you've done something right. And now, once the day you quit your job and you say, this is my career, now you're in a battle of relevancy. And for a lot of people, I don't think they understand that. Because it's like, say you're getting, I don't know how many millions of views a month you need to exist off of YouTube. I've never been able to do it, but... Say you're getting a million views a month, and that's just enough to pay your bills. Say people aren't watching your videos. What do you do? You have to do something. This is your life now. So you either continue churning out the same crap that you've been churning out, and you stop enjoying what you're doing, or you start talking about something else, something that you know will get you views. And again, with certain channels, who can just put up a video about drama and get millions of views, why couldn't you? That's something people don't realize. And I ask you guys to really think about this. Because it's like, the moment you quit your job for YouTube, the adult world, and I feel like there might be some kids in here, but the adult world is so much based upon consistency. You figure, um, right now I have a car bill, I have a phone bill, I have all sorts of bills. Okay, in a few months I'll have more bills, but... If I don't keep making that money, then everything falls apart. Your credit takes a hit, and then once your credit takes a hit, suddenly a lot of places don't trust you with money anymore. So when you're a successful YouTuber, you have to continue at that level or improve. Because if you fall off a little bit, your, your existence could be completely altered. So I don't say this as a hate piece towards big YouTubers. Far from it, okay? Like... Any YouTuber that has been able to successfully make a career out of YouTube, good job, for real. People like um, Philip DeFranco, people who have been doing it for like a decade, wow, good job. To people who put out drama videos, you know what, if it gets you the views, then just keep doing it. For reaction channels, again, if it gets you the views, just keep doing it. I don't care if it's fair use. You can make the argument until you're blue in the face, it's not fair use, but it hasn't stopped yet. So somewhere, someone on YouTube thinks it is fair use. So if it wasn't fair use, you could just sue them. Again, don't say it to be mean, but it's the bottom line. If you can do YouTube and make a career out of it, good job. Because other people have been doing YouTube for almost a decade and have not been able to make a career out of it. And I don't say that because I'm jealous. I say that because it's a fact. YouTube is a business. It's the same thing as if you were, say, an actor. Okay, If you're an actor and nobody's hiring you for parts, you know what you're not doing anymore? You're not acting. And if you're not acting, you're not making money. That's why you have so many actors who go, I have to take a job, because you need money. And once you make YouTube your career, you need to make money. It is your job. But that's about all I have to say. Uh, at the beginning, I mentioned an apology to my subscribers. And that is strictly because um, when the Danza Gaming channel went live, I got really sloppy with uploading here. I know. I know. I promised I wouldn't. But realistically, we're doing like seven videos a week. I know. I know, right? And it's a lot of, of content. And I also still work. So I think it will get better at some point. But for what it was... Ugh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to say that I'm going to do better again, because I said that in the last video and I didn't. So I'm sorry. If you guys enjoy the video, the content, subscribe. 
like, please, it, it helps. Like, <laughs> really, 62 subscribers. You know, if you guys have made it this far, you enjoyed something. If, um, if you like gaming videos and you enjoy me as a person, feel free to check out the Dons of Gaming channel. I'm not going to put a link on the screen. I know I'm not. It's going to be in the description. And, of course, if you enjoy wrestling, I also have a wrestling channel. So, man, I have a lot of crap to pimp out at the end. But that's all I got to say. So, thanks for watching. Peace out, I'm Skillets.